All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Chakwadash. We'd also like to give double honors to our elders and apostles at Great Millstone that do well. We'd like to say peace and salutations to the Lord's elect, the hopeful elect in the one third. And Lord's will this lesson will be edifying as well as exhorting to the sincere sheep of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Chakwadash. As well as the Wadiyah Bashem El Shai Bashem Rakakwadash for giving us the inspiration to do this lesson. And as our uh, weekly sit downs continue, this is the book of Acts sit down, uh, chapter 9th. All right, and today's date is uh, August 29th, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And uh, pretty much we're just going to go uh, right into where we left off. And um, I do want to say the Wadiyah Bashem El Shai for allowing me and the brother to get together. Um, you know, in the midst of being in our captivity, you know, to continue our sit downs. So, uh, the Wadi Abashim Al Shai for that. And uh, the brother Kradaza is going to read. And uh, I'm going to pull up uh, the blue letter right here on our screen. Let's make sure the audio is good. Okay. And uh, brother, whenever you're ready. All right. <clears throat> uh, we can start it off. All right. <clears throat> this is uh, Acts 9 and verse 1. And it says, The conversion of Saul. All right. Yep. Yep. All right here it says it too, so it's conversion. Oh, beautiful. Then you just kind of lift up your voice, brother, so they can uh, catch right. you on the mic. This is uh, Acts 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet bringing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and, de Perfect. and desired of him letters to Damascus, to, to, to the synagogue. So look at the spirit that Saul was in um, under the old covenant. Okay, so being under the, the mindset of the old covenant can be very dangerous, all right? And we actually see that spirit today with our people, um, you know, even just something simple as where's your fringes, right. you know? You know, not how you doing, brother? Hey, Shalom, brother, do you know that you're an Israelite, brother? Do you know that you got to save your brother? But the first thing is, is where's your fringes? Or they say, uh, I can see you not serving God. No, nah, we're an Israelite, okay? You're an Israelite. That, that alone gives you that acceptance. So I like Acts 9 because it's a great example for us to see, you know, the spirit that a lot of our people are in, you know. So immediately when I read this, I said, oh, man, Deacon Akai, you need Yahweh Shai. Yep. You know, Alazar, you need Yahweh Shai. Nate, you need Yahweh Shai. OK, because with not having Yahweh Shai, because when they say, doesn't they say it's uh, gentle, it's meek. Let me get that real, real quick. About the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I believe it's in Galatians. Yeah, yeah. Three, I think. Gentle and meek. Real, real quick. Okay? Real quick. Okay, JV. Apostle Paul's a great example. I got James 3. Are you... Are you <clears throat> then there's first... There's a few, actually. Let me get this one, though. I like this one in James. Look, it's got the nice letter. Look, it's got the nice Bible. And after a long day... You know, the sunset. <laughs> James 3, 17, it says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So one thing that I noticed with characteristics from Saul before he was changed to a chosen vessel sent out as Apostle Paul um, you know, the, the, he, he wasn't carrying himself with, um, you know, to be easily entreated. He wasn't being gentle. You know, he wasn't being uh, peaceable. He was being quite the contrary. Mm -hmm. So Acts 9 is a great chapter for, um, you know, the over-the-top law-abiding Israelites to understand about the uh, quote-unquote evolution of our culture. And this is a great example to show you what Yahweh Shai can do to you. All right. As an Israelite, uh, embracing grace, you know, embracing uh, imperfection, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but you got it, bro. I got the one you want. This okay. is a, a Galatians 5 and verse uh, 22. Galatians 5 and verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, mm. joy, peace, long suffering, mm. gentleness, goodness and faith. Right, not the law. Right, it says faith. Right, and it says meekness, temperance. Against su against such, there is no law. See, so when you carry yourself in that manner, you're living the law. So right. you don't need to be told 
about the law. All right. Because in the spirit, you're already going to be doing that. You see? So this is a great example. I'm a, I'm a, I, I hope it's going to be pushed on my spirit for this whole chapter of this sit down. I'm going to keep saying it. Deacon Akai, you need Yahweh Shai. You don't need Christ, bro. Right. You need Yahweh Shai. Okay. The chief Ephraims, you know, you guys out there that are just pushing heavy on um, the most high, you know, you know, you need Yahweh Shai, bro. And Paul, Saul is a great example to show what an overzealous law abiding Israelite, how his life changes once Yahweh, well, once you accept Yahweh Shai into your heart. Yeah. But the, uh, but the flip side to that is this John 15 and 16. Let me get this real quick. If you're not chosen, okay, which proves Paul was chosen because it says he was a chosen vessel. Mm -hmm. If you're yep. not chosen, you're going to stay in this overzealous, you know, uh, um, banging on everything moving. Yeah. Over righteous. Right. It's like, because if you don't have the flat, if you don't have your fringe, it's like you lacking the wrong flag. Right. Like, oh, you don't got the right flag on. But this is... Um, uh, John 15 and 16, ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. So at the end of the day, we may tell you other Israelites how you need Yahweh Shai, but if you have not been chosen, then you will not receive the spirit, uh, spiritual blessings that come with Yahweh Shemel Shai. Hence why you'll be left uh, uh, overzealous, over angered, yeah, you know, over, over the top with the law. No peace. No peace. You'll actually think if, if we're all sinning, we'll never get out of here. That's the majority of these camps push. If you actually listen to the way they talk, there is a there is a behind-the-scenes understanding that if our people don't come back to the laws, we won't go back to the land. That's not true. Right. Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. Remember Jeremiah 1 and 5? I mm -hmm. ordained you. To be a prophet unto the nations. Right. That's right. That ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. There's another clear cut. So if we're going to ask the Father anything, we ask it in the name of Yahweh Shai. Very, very important. All right, back in Acts 9. Uh, back in Acts 9 and verse uh, 2, and it says, And desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So arresting them. Yeah. See that? And remember, Yahweh Shai said that uh, in this walk that you would be bound and brought forth. Yeah, yeah. He said that in Matthew 24. Let me show you that real quick. So, um, you know, in these latter days, entering Jacob's trouble, uh, which we'll know when Jacob's trouble is Jacob's trouble. But, um, so to, you know, if you get happen to get hemmed up or bound up, you know, especially... For being a Hebrew Israelite, you gotta understand that's that was a part of what was warned unto us. Yeah. Okay, this is um, Matthew's twenty-four, and um, uh, where is it? Oh, look at this. See, uh, many shall be offended. Why did uh -huh. you, remember Yahweh said tonight you'll be offended? You know, so we gotta understand those things. But uh, Matthew's twenty-four, and uh, or is it ten and twenty? I believe yeah, Matthew's ten. Thank you. I heard Matthew's ten and verse twenty, uh, right? Uh, Take no yeah, thought yep. the water. Uh, verse 19. Okay. Yeah. Yep, right here. Um, I read let's it. Start, okay, we'll start at uh, 16. Matthew 10 and 16, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And those wolves are starting with the own wolf pack of our people. Grievous wolves shall enter in, not sparing the flock. We warned you, brothers and sisters, about that. So you got to understand, wickedness will get away with what you allow it to. It's going to keep being wicked if you keep allowing it to. Okay, so for these other Jakes, all right, they're in these other camps, um, T-shirt fringe camps. Th these wicked men are only going to keep being wicked until you use your Yahweh Shai against them. Yeah. That's all it is. And it says, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yep. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils. Now, one of the first men we read about... Um, in Acts, you go into what the uh, the the synagogue of Sicilia, yeah, right, which is Acts seven, which Apostle Paul was from Sicilia, and then now here's another man that's delivering up our people, whose name is Saul, right? Okay, but then Saul gets converted, so it's like Saul left IUIC to enter Great Millstone, right? Let's just let's just say it like that, okay? Apostle a, a Saul was once a prominent leader 
amongst uh, uh, IUICs of the such, okay, meaning law, 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 and then humility took place, all right, the Lord visited him and led him to what? Uh, Yahweh Shai's voice, because the sheep know his voice and they follow him. That's right. And now what, and why do you think Great Millstone um, is very big on the letters of Paul? Because that's a grander understanding outside of just the law under the old covenant. Okay, let's keep going. And it says, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Beat you, because they're allowed to. All right, let's actually look that up. Uh, I believe it's called flogging. Yeah, yes, flogging. Flogging law, Torah. Remember when you were little, you got to grab that belt or that yep. switch? Hell yeah. So let's go to flogging. Look, see right here, I don't know why he was, he was positioned like that. Uh, Deuteronomy 25 and 2. See, flogging was in biblical law the standard punishment for all offenses. Oh, so you, you got, this is why our video is going to strike. They're flogging us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, this was a part of the repercussions of us serving Yahweh Bashem Shai past just the law, but also the law and the prophets. Right. See, you can be a law by the Israelite, but are you a law... Uh, and profit abiding Israelite, meaning you live by the law, but you also live by the understanding of the changing of our customs according to prophecy. That's the big difference. We live by the law, but we also live by the prophets right, and yeah. the prophecies that came with that. Because if that's not the case, then we wouldn't stay in Babylon. Remember it says, um, go into Babylon, there you'll be delivered. Mm -hmm. But if we live by just the law, we wouldn't need to stay in Babylon. Right. We would go to Yisrael. See? You got to understand, there is a big difference of how we serve Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, depending on if you also serve him according to prophecies being fulfilled, what we uh, read written down. Okay? So let's keep going. Uh, Matthew 10 and verse 18. And he shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Exactly. Okay, exactly. So just like we read back then. So this proves that it was the spirit on Apostle Paul when he made it known that he was a Roman citizen. Right. If you did, A lot of people don't know how, why did uh, Paul go to Rome because he was brought up the council and I believe Jerusalem, which he was told he'd be bound. Um, it wasn't Agabus. It was another prophet that tied up and let Paul know oh, yeah. that he was going to be tied up. Yep. So then after his beating and they were going to, I believe, uh, kill him, then he let it be known that he was a Roman citizen. And that's what led him uh, to Rome itself. Right. Okay. Yep. So let's keep going. All right. Back in Acts 9 and verse uh, 3. And it says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto, me, unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Mm. And now this was uh, what you would call being uh, knocked off uh, the high horse. Yeah, knocked off his high horse. Yeah, let's see, uh, let's see what the origins of that is. Okay, let's put knocked off high horse origin. I'm just curious. Um, it says the e Edom get off your high horse originated in the early 1900s and likely comes from the practice of medieval landowners and soldiers riding large horses to show their power and superiority over others. So what we see was what um, apostle or excuse me, Saul, the Pharisee Saul was uh, on a high horse heading to Damascus to um, persecute the church mm -hmm. and the Lord humbled him, which is what? Uh, before honors humility. Yeah. That was that Proverbs uh, 15, 15 and 33. 30, 33. Uh, yeah. Proverbs 15 and 33. Um, the fear of Yahweh Bashem El Shai is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. So here's a great example. Okay. And even we ourselves can look at this as a great example of the humility that we have are and going through in this walk so that we can stay near the Habashim El Shai because sometimes we may need sense knocked into us and it could happen in a, in a manner where you get humbled. Right. I'm humbled, man. I'm humble. I'm good. I'm sorry. Salaki, I'm humbled, man. My fault. Because all that was is, um, don't as the scriptures say, don't be uh, overzealous. 
Yeah, I believe it says over righteous. Yeah. Let's see over zealous well, first. It's ultimately the same thing, I believe. Yeah. But it says don't be over wicked much, don't be over zealous. Yeah, Ecclesiastes right here. Uh, be not righteous over much, mm -hmm. neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? So this is what Saul was on the path of. He was being uh, a righteous over much because mm -hmm. of the law and uh, over wise because knowledge puffeth up. And that that could have led to his destruction. Yeah. That's why the Lord had to stop him. Yeah. Like, hold on, man. Hold on. Like, that's what we're saying. These t-shirt fringe camps out yep. here. Hey, man, you, you could be over righteous, bro. You need a you need to read Acts nine, Deacon Akai. You need Yahweh Shai, bro. And and as a brother, I should be telling you that, right? Yeah. Hey, we can tell guys that don't have Yahweh Shai because they have the law more than the Lord. Okay, let's keep going. Well, back in Acts nine and verse five, it says, "And he said, Who art thou, Lord?" And the Lord said, "I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest." Now he heard this in the Hebrew tongue. That's okay, right. Because uh, we're going to skip a couple chapters up and uh, show you that this was spoken uh, in the Hebrew tongue. And there's many times where Apostle Paul made mention of that. You see that? Now, um, let me see right here. This is his account in Acts 26. It says, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. Right. See? So the Hebrew tongue uh, the Lashwan Kodash is extremely important in so much that scholars have admitted that um, uh, men, uh, men uh, ancient Nazareans actually kept the Paleo Hebrew. Now, I have a book right here. It's called, uh, let me show you, just just cause so we can make a point um, and give respect to the language of, 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 of our language. Right. You know, so this book is called uh, Fossilized Customs. It's a good book. All right, let me go right here. Fossilized, just bear with me. Fossilized customs. And um, I'm going to show you something, okay? So right here. Um, is that? That's not the one. Let me see. Fossilized customs, a pagan. Let me see. Uh, let's go to images. There it is, right there. So we're holding this book in our hand right now. And as you can see on this mm. book, look, it says, are you ready to go to the next level? And the next level comes with this understanding. Yahawa, Yahawashai. Okay, and this is what Paul heard, okay, or Saul at the time. Now, within this book, uh, page 17, okay, it says uh, the Nazareans held a copy of the memoirs of Matthew's real name penned in the original Hebrew. Okay, so uh, you have to understand that. Our language was preserved amongst our elders, okay? Because even Daniel, um, they note in this book that when the um, many, many tickle, yeah. that was written in the Lashwan Kodash. That's mm -hmm. why only Daniel could break that down uh -huh. because it was in the Paleo-Hebrew. So Paul heard in the Paleo-Hebrew. That's, that's edifying. Okay? Wow. So now let's go back to it. Uh, back in Acts 9 in yeah. the verse. Um, and, and let me just show this for the uh, brothers um, how the hell do I show my screen? I mean, oh yeah, yeah there right it there, is. Yep. Okay, so let's go like that. Okay, right there. Let me go down right there. Okay, you can get this book yourself. And then right there, it goes into it. Oh, and it also tells you how there's no V's. Okay, so there's a lot of good information in here. Let me go right there. And I'll read this for you as a quick excerpt. Okay, you can pause it, buy the book yourself. All right, now um, let's go back to this. All right. And I'm just going to read this oh, Bible Kishon. Yeah, yeah. It says, um, it says, uh, he says, the guy who's uh, the, the author, he says, I prefer Yahushua, but he, but he understands that's because that's what he believes the pronunciation of that language is. Mm. But the but the but the language that we speak is also recorded as the Canaanite uh, tongue or the Phoenician Hebrew. Right. Ah ba ga da ha wa sa na ma ka la i pa taza kwa rosh you know sha Um. It says it 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 it, it, it as it was originally written Yahweh Shai. For one thing, Moshe could read it. Daniel could read it too, as well as King Dawada. Mm. 
um, it says, um, why am I so hung up on the old Hebrew? It's the inspired script. Mm. There you go. Okay, so even this guy, um, Lou White, okay, even this guy had enough sense where he understood the importance of the original language because that's where you find truth. Hence why when we go into uh, the scriptures, we also go into the blue letter to find out certain words. Like just because it says virgin doesn't mean what you know it means today right. in um, West the Western Hemisphere. So with Hebrew Israelites not going into the Hebrew, you don't you're not on a, a higher level with the understanding of the scriptures you read um, and really your entry. Like this is entry, okay? So let's finish this about the Hebrew tongue. Acts 26 and 14, just so you know, Paul heard in the Hebrew tongue, right here he said it. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and, and saying in the Hebrew tongue. Matter of fact, let's just let's just see. What the commentary has to say. Now, I will say this. Scholars also let it be known that after the Babylonian captivity, there was uh, an Assyrian Hebrew floating around. This is why you have to understand the preservation of the ancient Hebrew or Paleo Hebrew. So when you go down to Acts 14, um, let's see. Uh, 26. Okay, here it is. A light brighter than the sun. Kick against the pricks. Oh, so why aren't they going into the Hebrew? Oh, wow. See that? Look. <clears throat> right here, I hear in the Hebrew language. Journey to Damascus. I saw a light persecuting me. All right, why are you persecuted? Look, so they skip right past it. Oh, See? Wow. So it's very important for us to go into it. Because just like our elders tell you, the blue letter goes off. Why would you not want to um, kind of dive more into that? Right. But anyways... <clears throat> It says, uh, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, or the Lashwan Kodash, or the Paleo Hebrew, or the Phoenician Hebrew, or the language of Canaan, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. So I just wanted to pull that out to show you that even while we're reading, even though it says it in English here, uh, the conversation between Yahweh Shai and uh, soon to be Apostle Paul was in the Paleo Hebrew. That's right. Okay. Uh, back in uh, Acts. Yep. Okay. Back in Acts chapter. Uh, um, um. Yeah. And let me show him. Let me show him this real quick. Let me show you another uh, oh, good yeah. example. Because we were gonna do this outside, but um, it, it, we saw it sprinkling, you know, so we didn't wanna. But uh, check this out right there. Okay. See where my fingers at? Just got off work, so mind it. Okay. We'll look right there. Now I'm gonna read that to you. See, so you could take this. You can screenshot it. All right. Now check this out. So this, what I was just holding for you, is going to back up the statements uh, that we're making. It says, um, it says the Hebrew name Joshua is really uh, Havashai. Uh, Moshe changed Havashai's name to Yah uh, Havashai. It is seen written in interlinears as in modern Hebrew, which Moses himself couldn't read. It was originally written in Paleo Hebrew as Yahweh Shai. Mm. This later changed letter. This later changed letter shapes during the Babylonian captivity to modern Hebrew. Wow. And what's a great example to wrap your head around that? I'll show you. Okay, um, history. Oh, history of Old English. Do not we speak English today? Yep. But you have old modern. Um and um uh, regular what I can't remember the, how you say it. Yeah, but, it's, it's a few. Yeah. But you had old English, the Anglo-Saxon, which that's us, okay. And then it went from uh, let me just try this, uh, old English, um, modern English. Let's see how it changes. Let's just go to uh images, okay. See, look, you had look the English language like you would yeah. put the Hebrew language, yep. Paleo. Phoenician, Assyrian, yep. Yiddish now. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? But because of prophecy Isaiah 19, the paleo is back. But see, you had Old English. There it is. Old English, Middle English, Early Modern English, Present Day. That's all it is. That's all it is. And Shalom, Yabba, Shemeshach, Barakatam. To the brothers and sisters on the comment board right here. Look at this. If you were to speak this in modern, you would say, then she went to speak this late modern English tongue. Then you go to it. 
Don the har old har. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you can't tell. Then look. Then she uh, something to see. So look at this is how the the our language changed depending on the empire, depending on who was ruling. You know, depending on the um, uh, records kept. That's why it was so important that um, they record the Nazareans held copies of the original writings of the book of Matthew that were written in the Paleo-Hebrew. See? So just like that today, okay? Just like our uh, uh, language back then. So I just wanted to give that quick point since the Spirit has given us utterance on that matter. I do find that to be edifying for us to understand, you know? So let's keep going now. Uh, back in Acts 9 and verse uh, 5, and it says, uh, I am Yahweh Shai, mm. whom thou persecutest. Oh, see, so what did he say? Did he say, I am Jesus? Mm -hmm. The letter J wasn't even created then. Right. Okay. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Mm. And he trembling and, and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Mm. And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So the Lord gave, you know, Paul direct instructions. Yep. You know, because ultimately, you know, Paul is a chosen vessel, you know, of Yahweh Shai. And it said he trembled, right? Uh, yes. So, yep. And guess what? That trembling comes from what? Fear. Yeah, fear. Yep. Yeah, fear. So when you go to Ecclesiasticus, fear is the first steps to be accepted by Yahweh Bashem Shai. So Paul didn't um, buck up. You see that? Saul didn't, he got humbled and he accepted. And he said, what do I do now then? Right. What do I do? I mean, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. Now, Paul or Saul also sinned through ignorance. Yeah. And isn't in the Torah, there is a law about ignorance? Yeah, the law of presumption is. Thank you. Yep. So this is Acts, or excuse me, uh, Ecclesiastes 19 and 18. It says, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted mm. of him and wisdom obtaineth his love. See that? So for a brother out there, okay, that um could be a secret disciple of Yahweh Shai, meaning you watch uh, GMS uh, sit-downs uh, in your own time, that's beautiful. You know, if there's any Israelite brothers out there, you know, even sisters, I'll say, but starting you brothers and you come across Great Millstone, if the Lord's dealing with you, you're not going to take the raw truth uh, in a personal attack. You're going to understand, oh, this is why that letter was written like that. This is why Yahweh Shai was like that. This means Yahweh Shai is speaking to these men because this is the real love. Just telling us to come back to the law ain't real love. Mm -mm. Introducing us to Yahweh Shai is real love. Okay? That's right. So let's keep going. And it says, uh, verse 7, And the men which journeyed with, with him mm -hmm. stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And like this right here, we have to say this uh, for the sake of um, uh, Yahweh Shai. Okay, which we understand what the, uh, I believe this is to be a brother. He said, I enjoy, uh, I believe this is a brother. I enjoy watching you brothers do uh, do the work. But what he's enjoying is Yahweh Shai. Right. That's the beauty of it. This is why, let me get this precept. I know what the brother means, but let's get the precept to further glorify Yahweh Bashmael Shai. Is that 1 Corinthians 11? Yep. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, be ye followers of me, even as yep. I also am of Hamashiach. So you're you're enjoying following after Yahweh Shai as we are uh, walking towards Yahweh Shai, uh, brother. So, hey, call all Yahweh Shai. That's what right. it's uh, about at the end of the day, you know? All of us uh, getting to Yahweh Shai to the best of our ability, you know? That's right. And it goes on to say, verse 8, and Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were open, he saw no man. Because he was what? Blinded. That's right. He was blinded by the law. He was blinded by ignorance. Let's look that up real quick. Let's put blinded by ignorance. That sounds like something. Let's see. Oh, look at this. See, that? that's oh, actually wow. something. That's something that goes into something. Let's see. All right, let's go back to images. Then we'll put KJV just to see. Oh, look, look, look. Waynesville Church of Hamashiach. See? Oh, wow. oh it's right there. See? Uh, Ephesians 4 and 1. Let's go to that. Ephesians 4. Uh, 4. Did it say Ephesians 4? Yeah. yeah. Okay, 1 to 3. I was going to say, because I know verse 4 goes into predestinated. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, well, we know that one. Okay, I don't know why they're using that. Let's see why they're using it. Um, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling 
with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Now, why is the Apostle Paul saying that? Because he was also a man that was persecuting the church that he was ultimately set up to love. Mm -hmm. So that's that's yeah. why I'm saying Deacon Aka. Someone tell Deacon Aka he needs Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Okay? You you other Israelite guys out here, you prominent leaders that have a major following. One thing you're not doing with all that following is not following Yahweh Shai. Okay? So now let's get out of this. Uh, blinded by ignorance. Uh, I believe Paul said he sinned uh, in ignorance. Let me look that up for you real quick. Um, ooh, what's this? Uh, Ephesians 4 and 18. They are darkened in their understanding and alienated from the life of Yahweh because of the ignorance that is that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Oh, That's yeah, you, yeah. Deke. Yo, Deke. He's uncircumcised that hurt. That's it. You're uncircumcised in the heart. You guys that come into this thing and you get the law pushed down your throat, it hardens you, bro. And that caused them to, re to uh, resist the Holy Spirit. Ultimately. Ex exactly. And you know where there was an example of that? The restoration of the temple in the time of the Maccabees. Right. You had certain right. Israelites that were too overzealous. You're right. Like, bro, you being overzealous right now. Yeah. See that? So we, this is a, I'm going to keep saying it. All right. This is a great example to show you what we're dealing with or what's why they're the bucking up against the truth is happening right before our faith uh, face. Uh, Isaiah 44 and 18. I'm sure these aren't K KJV. Yeah. So was, just yeah. be mindful. I was thinking that too. But uh, I'm cool with them. It says they do not comprehend or discern for he has shut their eyes so they cannot see and close their minds so they can't understand. Oh, wow. That's Isaiah 6 right there. Right. You know? we, got to, we got to pray for y'all. <laughs> right. We got to pray for y'all. Y'all not getting it. That's why how shy matters. You know, that's yeah. why you got to be uh, reborn in the spirit. Boom. You know, not currently. Just like Nicodemus said, he said, I got to go Ooh. back to my, in the outside the womb. He was being simple. No, no. He got, you got to be reborn spiritually. Which Nicodemus was a secret disciple. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he helped uh, carry Yahushai's body for the um, the oh, wow. uh, the aspect of the um, the bombing and the wrapping. And things oh, wow. Like yeah, yeah. I got a quick one. Okay. For sure, real quick. Going in about the peace. This is the book of um, John chapter 16 and verse 33. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, right? And, you know, anyhow, shy, yeah. right? In the world, you shall have tribulation, right? Because we're in slavery, captivity, you know, kitchen hell on all sides. But guess what? It's going to get worse because you got to go to Jacob's trouble, you know, the hour of temptation. So things are about to ramp up. But we have Yahweh Shai, you know, to lean on. And it says in the world, meaning this world that we're living in, ye shall have tribulation, which ultimately, you know, means distress or, you know, uh, despair. But we have Yahweh Shai. And it says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So what does that mean? That means that Yahweh Shai is to be looked at as the greatest example. You know, we have to, you know, apply Yahweh Shai sayings and, you know, and believe what he says because, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's true. You know, but ultimately, you know, going about the peace, you know, Yahweh Shai gave us his peace, you know, because we're in hell. But that's why we said earlier, like guys like Deacon Akai and these Jakes that are t shirt fringes, Israelites, they know they don't have the peace of Yahweh Shai, you know, but they think they're going to get peace through the law. Yeah. And that's not it. Nope. That was all, all right. Say. So back to uh, Acts 9. Yep. All right. Let's kind of see if we can get through this. Um, but we're, we're just getting what's given to us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, lot of good information. You got it. Back in Acts 9 and in verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. So you got to understand, that was heavy. They led him by the hand. Right. You can't see. You, you're completely at the Lord's whim right here. Because see, with the law, you got this, uh, you know, this um, walk it, how I talk. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you're going to carry us. You mean, when you got the law back then, you was walking like Denzel. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got that strut to you. Cause show me where I'm sitting. Right. You know, so that when you when Jake with the law, they didn't feel they needed Yahweh Shai. Right. You know. Let's keep going. And it says, and he was three days without sight, and mm -hmm. neither did eat nor drink. Wow. So he, that was a fast. Ooh. That was mm. actually a fast. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here. Uh, excuse me. Behold, I am here, Lord. 
And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah. For one called Saul of Tarsus, Tarsus for behold, he prayeth, mm. and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. That's Powerful. amazing. So so both of their paths were you know, aligned through Yahabashim Shai. Right. And it says, putting his hand on him that he might receive wow. sight. Now that reminds me of Matthew 10, where Yahweh Shai gave his disciples uh, power. Wow. That's amazing. Right here. It started with the 12. Matthew 10 and 1. It says, and when he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You see that? Right. Because Yahushai said he came for the sick. Right. You know, he didn't, didn't he not heal a man that was blind yeah. in John 9? So yeah. that's showing you that um, we have to have been given eyes to see. So the Lord had to give Saul eyes to see and that converted him to the apostle Paul. That's right. So we're dealing with men on a grander scale uh, out on the te out teaching they're showing you they don't have eyes to see Yahweh Shai. So they're blindly serving the Lord with a zealousness of the law. Right. And that's going to lead them down a path of swift destruction because now their heart, their head is hard, their heart is hard. And the Lord said that, that um, write it on stone for the hardness of their heart. Right, exactly. Let me get that for us. That was symbolic for Jake's stiff neckness. Yep. You know? Yep. Hardness of their Hearts, real quick. Um, yep. Oh, yep. That divorce one, I like that one too, because that's another thing too. We ain't supposed to have a law of divorce, but that law of divorce came because Jake's hardness, man. So for y'all out there, we're not supposed to be having a law of divorce. Um, I believe it was one of the as well. Yeah, there's a few. It is like it is a few. Yeah, there's bad. a few. Um. Uh, Hebrews 3 and 8, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Yep. See? Right. So it's being told, hey, don't harden your hearts like you had it hardened before. Okay? So that's a scary thing. Yeah, he said he wrote it on stone. Uh, I'll do, let me look it up too. Wrote it on stone for the... Let me see what comes up. I got one right here. Okay, I got Matthews 19. Well, they don't say, let's say stiff neck. This is uh, Exodus 33 and verse 5. It says, For the Lord has said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff neck people. Yep. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore, now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know that, excuse me, that I may know what to do unto thee. So there you go. So our people are, are, are born stiff neck, okay, like us at one point. Now watch this one. Matthews 19 and 8, Yahweh Shai replied, NIV, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because of your hearts were hard, mm. but it was not this way from the beginning. See that? So the hardness of our heart is a is a not a good thing. Like Jake be like, man, I'm hard, man. What you talking about? You know, now nah, you gotta be soft when it right. comes to the understanding of the Lord. All right. You know? Gotta be you know, have that meekness. Yeah. You know? Okay, so back in Acts. It says back in Acts 9 and verse uh 13. 13. Then in an Ananias answered, a Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So it's powerful <laughs> that um, Saul got a name amongst the believers, you know, of a bad rep. But the Lord using Saul is showing us that uh, even in our evilness, that can st the Lord can still be dealing with us and forgive us. Right. You know, and it says, and here and here. He had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Well, look at this. Here's a brother got a personal testimony, which proves Yahweh Shai is working. Mm. Okay, his brother right here, Hope, Grace, Mercy. He said, I was with one body in Yahweh Shai, which now it's one body in Dallas. Wow, yeah. Uh, he says out here in Dallas, Texas, and they pushed law, law, law. Wow, yeah. Had me bugged out for some time. So, Brakate oh, Yahweh Shai for Shemashai. pulling that brother out of that. Because right. I, I know I know what you mean, bro. And I know what you mean, man. Now, I wasn't, but I understand what you're saying. Because if they're just pushing the law to you, they're not pushing the Lord to you. And you kind of find yourself like a fucking cop yeah. in lurking places. Yeah. Waiting to billy club somebody because they ain't got fringes on. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, and, and that also too can put a like put you in a spiritual dilemma. Yeah, and that's ultimately them putting a stumbling block in front of you. Well, I got one. Because there's no because with the law, you know, I, you know, it's not merciful. There you it know? is. Yep. Well, Yahweh Shai said, "Look, this is exactly what the brother was going through." Matthew's twenty three and four. This is red letter. Any brother or sister coming from a t-shirt fringe camp, you know what I mean. You come in and, and notice all these t-shirt fringe camps are law. Mm -hmm. You come from these t-shirt fringe camps, read Matthew's 23 in its entirety. How was shy was getting on them. Okay. It says, for they bind heavy burdens. Law, 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 law. For they bind heavy burdens. He told a woman she couldn't heat up her baba for her oh, baby. Man. Alizar, Alizar needs you was shy, bro. Alizar, you need you was shy, bro. Tripping, man. It says, uh, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and they lay them on men's shoulders. Come on. Come on, Deacon Kai. Come on, Eliziah. Right? Mm -hmm. Get Officer Eliziah. Stand right here. <laughs> like, look, bro. look for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, hold on, bro. Hold on. Oh, we're righteous, man. And that's what it is. Now, there's one thing for a brother... Or an elder to push a brother for manhood. Mm -hmm. But it's another to be overzealous and try to break them. Yeah. You can't be breaking brothers. If you break them, you got to build them yeah, up. Yeah, you got to build them back you up. Build that brother up. It says, and they lay them on men's shoulders. Here, put this on. Hurry up. Put this on. Hurry up. But they themselves will, mm. not, move them, will not move them with one of their fingers. See that? And they'll give an excuse. Give me, give me, give me Act 6. Look. You got to go out and get the flyers and the sandwiches. We got to sit here and read. Come on, officer. Read. And they got the flaming lions. Come on, bro. That ain't it. They're abusing their authority. Yeah, exactly. That's why Yahweh Shai said they got the outward appearance. And it also was prophesied in Ezekiel. Let's keep going. Back in uh, Acts 9 and verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel Woo! unto me. To what? To bear my name. Hold up, right there. To bear my name. So would IUIC accept Apostle Paul? Nope. If Apostle Paul went up to uh, teach with them, speak with them, right? When he say reason in the synagogue, yeah, he, that means he would have today. He would have went to their camp. Yep. And guess what? They wouldn't have gotten nowhere. Didn't he say that? Let's get that too. Uh, three days. It's, yeah, yeah. They like yeah, like three Sabbaths. Yeah. He was in the synagogues. Going uh, back and forth. Let me put it like this. The blood is... is it, did he say off my hands? Yeah, but he said my my hands are clean, I believe. Yeah, the water. I believe it's like Acts 16. Yeah, or it's... Something like that. It's a couple chapters up. Oh, look. Acts 20. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Let's go to that. Yep, let's go to Acts 20. Okay, Acts 20. Which we're going to be reading that in a few, you know. Uh, Acts 20. What did it say? 6 or 16? 26. Uh, let me see. Are you going to talk about the one he's talking talking to the, the Gentiles? Yeah, because I want to go into how he first. This is um. Yeah, right here. This is uh. This is Acts twenty, and uh, let me see. Right, yep, yep. It's this is it. This is it. That's it right here. Let's just start at uh, 25. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. My bad. Uh, Acts 20 and verse 25. Yep. Sorry. And it, and it reads, Acts 20 and 25. And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of the Most High, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to, to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Oh, yeah, this priest. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. It says, for I, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. See? Keep going. The, uh, take heed, therefore, unto, you, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of the Most High, Yahweh, mm. which he hath purchased with his own blood. Yep. Now let's go to Acts 17 and 1. Acts 17 and verse 1. Now when they had passed through... Uh, Am uh, uh, Amphipolis and uh, Apollonia. Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica, where there, uh, where it was a synagogue of the Jews. Boom! Cut. First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. Who was he speaking to? He was speaking to the Gentiles. Right. Okay. Was there a synagogue of Jews in Thessalonica? Yes or no? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Right. right here. Right. Okay. So there, brothers, keep that on deck. 
rope them in with that. If you get the, if you have to talk to someone, which really that's t-shirt fringe um, uh, action now. Yeah. If you notice, you know, we really, you have people sometimes come around, but majority of the time, the, the spirit has free course. Yeah. But if you happen to deal with somebody who is trying to learn and you really want to wrap their head around, even a, even a Jake, say, okay, let me give you a exa good example. So we have to understand the context of the scriptures. So like you have 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, right? And you go, yeah. So you were to assume that those are just people of Thessalonica. That's the city. That's what it's called. Yeah, right. Under Rome. So do you think that the, he could have been speaking to Israelites there or Jews there? You could say Jews personally. That'll really rope them in. You say, ah, no, because they were in Jerusalem and they stay. Okay, good, perfect. Now let's go to Acts 17 and 1. So then when you read this to them, there shouldn't be a need to go to another scripture. This is where you got to say, okay, now your mind should be open. Your mind should be open to say, oh, okay, so what you're telling me is when salvation is for the uh, Gentiles, that's to the Israelite foreigners that didn't know that they were Israelites because prophecy in Isaiah 11 and 10 says they would come from here. Deuteronomy 68 and 54 said they'd be sent there. Oh, I get it now. And they say, yeah, even a step further, did you know Saul, who was changed to Apostle Paul, he even scattered the early Israelite believers of who the world eagerly calls Jesus, who we believe through faith is Yahweh Shai, according to the ancient Paleo-Hebrew that's found in the prophecy of Isaiah 19 chapter. See, you can rope that. It's a lot, but he ropes it all in. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information. Okay? So, um, keep going. Uh, back in Acts 17 and verse 2. Excuse me. And it says... My bad. It says... So, he's reasoning with the synagogue of Jews in Thessalonica. Hence why he said in Thessalonians, they got a strong delusion. Right. So, you got to understand when you read certain precepts... Uh, in these letters or epistles, there is a backstory or there is a unbeliever that the new believers may have had a debate or right. deal with. Basically, they would have been like, yeah, we watched uh, Mark the Messenger and he said this. We watched Nathaniel and he said that. Alazar told us this. So then Paul earnestly writing back, defending the gospel, as it says, and um, I treat you as a chaste virgin. So he's going to be writing back to them like he's be texting quick, calling quick. Right. No, 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 no. Listen to him. Don't listen to him. All right. Keep going. Uh, Acts 17 and 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. To the Israelites in Thessalonica. Keep going. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and uh, alleging that Yahweh Shai and Mashiach must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. Woo! And that this Yahweh Shai, whom I preached unto you, is Mashiach. So he went into the scriptures and went into the prophecies to save the man who we're reading about. Isaiah 7 and 14. Right. Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 53. That was him. Right. That's why we call him the anointed. See? Right. So what we're doing now is what was being done back then. So we reasoned with Alazar. He didn't want it. Uh, a deacon. He didn't. What we still going to tell you. Right? Hey, you need Yahweh Shai, bro. That was all the point I wanted. Okay. All right, let's go back to Acts 9. Back in Acts 9 and verse 15. 15 yep. And it says, uh, For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So he did that to the kings, Fetus, uh, Agrippa. Mm -hmm. Why did Paul not want Agrippa in chains? <laughs> yep. Right? Then he did it to the children of Israel. He said three Sabbaths. Yep. He said he went to the synagogues in Thessalonica. And then you got who? The Gentiles, yep. the Israelite foreigners, those that believe, but they didn't have the requirements because they went up to camp and he said, if you in a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, get the fuck out. Right. And that's false. That's false, bro. And they, and they always say, if you're not in the chart, then you're not an Israelite. That's false. Hey, guess what? You don't got to be a, a Negro to be a Judite. Right. You could be your, you, now, of course, your father's father's father, but you could be a, a Caucasian. And be a Judite. And be a Judite, but your lineage. You don't got to be a West Indian to be a Benjamite, bro. Exactly. Paul wasn't a West Indian. He was a Benjamite. Yep. That's why you got guys missing the mark using the end days uh, understanding of who's identified on the chart when our people are coming from all walks of life. Right. The 12 tribes chart is based off a uh, prophecy of Ezekiel uh, 37 and then Genesis 49. But our people are scattered abroad according to, according to the curses. So if you're going to add one, you're going to have to add the other. It's math. If you got to add the curses, you all, you also got to add prophecy. All right? And then that equals what? Truth. Mm-hmm. That's right. 
And it says, verse 16, for I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. For my name's sake. See that? So when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Okay? But the main important thing out of this point is Apostle Paul was set up to bear the name of Yahweh Shai. That's right. This is why modern day Christians under white Eurocentric Christianity push Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because they have an understanding to a degree uh, um, of the importance of the name. They just don't right. have the right name. So it's like if you look at Christians today, American Christians and uh, Hebrew Israelites, you got to add both of that with truth, though. You're right. The yeah. law aspect, us knowing we're Israelites, but then the name importance, but not the name of Jesus, the name of Yahweh Shai. See, you got to right. add. You got to add it. They all. They all. They got pieces of it. Right. Exactly. And that's why the, the, this truth is called the hundred percent truth. Right. Because the other doctrines, they may have like eighty five percent. You know, even uh, 99 percent, but it's not 100 percent. No, you know, but we have 100 percent. This is first John two real quick. And now Apostle Paul got 100 percent. Right, exactly. This is first John two and 21, 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. Mm, right. All is 100. Is your battery, is your phone battery charged all the way? Mm -hmm. 100 percent. Nope. It's 99. <laughs> well, then you better keep charging it. Yep. Did you get it charged all the way? Did you give them all the money? Did you tell them all the truth? See? Mm -hmm. It's very simple. And it says, verse 17. And the word unction uh, for first John means oil. Ah, uh, right. This oil. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic for this truth. And it says, for I will shew him, excuse me, verse 17. And an Ananias went his way and entered into the house <clears throat> and putting his hands on him. Yeah, that which proves what? Go and teach all nations. That's right. Baptizing them in my name. So Apostle Paul got baptized in the name of Yahweh Shai. Okay? That's right. And it says, And putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh Shai, that appeared unto thee in the ways as thou camest, has sent me. Mm. Just like how Paul received, you know, in that vision. This is exactly what, you know, uh, he saw in his vision. That thou mightest receive thy sight. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can't see unless you got the Holy Spirit. That's right. You can't see unless the Lord gave you eyes yeah. to see. So this is also a part of Isaiah uh, six. So the Lord allowed them to. The Lord allowed Apostle Paul to see. That's right. That's a scary thing. Like there was a time where we couldn't see. Remember, ye were Gentiles in the past time, carried away into dumb idols. That's One right. way or another, there was some that we were idolizing. And we were carried away to as Gentiles. Hell, you know. And it says, and immediately. There fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received uh, excuse me, and he received sight forwith, and arose and was baptized. See, and he was baptized. See that the name of Yahweh Shai, and um, Apostle Paul did the same thing to a few brothers when he asked them if they knew about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and they said we never heard uh, not not such. And then he laid hands on them um and baptize them in the name of Yahweh Shai and then they began to prophesy. Right. See? That's right. There's a different spirit that comes with you as an Israelite when um Yahweh Shai is dealing with you on the right hand side. That's right. Okay? And According to prophecy. And it says uh verse 19, and and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway, he preached Yahweh Shai in the synagogues. Immediately. So he used his opportunity to go and speak in the synagogue. That's right. Okay, because according to our custom, uh, you could speak uh, uh, in the synagogue as an Israelite man. So he used that opportunity to go into that law, to go into the law and push Yahweh Shai. That's right. He That's, ama him. That's amazing. He supplanted him. And it says that he is the son of the Most High. Mm. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name of Jerusalem? See, and why destroy uh, them that called on the name? Because that was against our law. Deuteronomy 13, Exodus 23, okay? Uh, Exodus uh, uh, tw uh, 20 and 7, mm -hmm. which IUIC, you're guilty of that law. You're guilty of Exodus, the law of Exodus 23 and 13. Be circumspect, uh, making mention of names of other gods out of thy mouth. So them not having the right understanding, they looked at that law uh, and used it against us. Like how a cop, um, he'll just find a certain law to use to get you. Yeah. You know, uh, disorderly. Yeah. Uh, interfering in my investigation. Right. You know? So that's what Jake was doing. They were finding uh, 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 laws that they could use to come against the believers. 
That's why they're shutting up the gates of heaven. Yeah. They're shutting up the kingdom towards you, man. These other camps are shutting up the kingdom of heaven every time they open their mouth and teach. Law, law, law. Yeah. The wicked shepherds. Exactly. And it says, verse uh, 21, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name of Jerusalem? That's why Apostle Paul pushed about being a new creature. Right. You have When you understand what he went through and what he was doing, then you understand further his exhortation, what he was saying to the new believers. Right. And helping them in the spirit. And, and understand, this is why he pushed Yahweh Shai, because he understood. He, he didn't have Yahweh Shai until Yahweh Shai came to him. So he, he was humbled enough to where he could push truth unto you. See, we push truth unto you. Okay, these guys aren't pushing truth because the Lord ain't dealing with them. That's right. But if they get knocked off the high horse and they're of the elect, then their the, then their doctrine and belief will change, and the message of what they're teaching will change as well. And until then, you're gonna see high-minded individuals that think they don't need Yahweh shy because they found perfection in the law. Right. You need the Holy Spirit, man. I got a quick one. Yeah. This is uh First Corinthians twelve and three in the NLT. A uh, First Corinthians twelve and verse three, it says. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the spirit of, you, of the Most High will curse Yahweh Shai, and no one can say Yahweh Shai is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You know, that's what you know Paul was proclaiming. You yep. know, the apostles, they were proclaiming the name of Yahweh Shai. So Paul, Apostle Paul is a great example of the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So the only way you yep. could truly be baptized or converted into the truth is through the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If that's you don't it. have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to... That's it. You're not going to get it, man. You're going to stay entry level. Yeah. That's it. You're going to stay just uh, pointing at the fringes. Yeah. You know? Just the flesh and not the the breath. Yep. As it's written in Ezekiel 37. Yep. Now, back in Acts 9 and 22, or excuse me, 21, it says, uh, uh, last verse, it says, and, uh, and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus. Proving that this is very Yahweh Shai. And they, uh, you can get uh, Luke 21 and 15 real quick. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a good one. This is the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse uh, 15. And it says, It says, For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Ooh, see that? And that's red letter. Now go to uh, 2 Samuel 3. Gotcha. So, so Apostle Paul was a great example to show the power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. And he was confounding the old letter. He was confounding the believers in the, in, in the letter. That that was their only, um, that was really where they got all their, um, their might from. Yeah. You see? So what's that mean for today? What does that mean for guys out here today pushing the law? They're getting ready to get confounded. Okay, because their foundation isn't Yahweh Shai. Flee the tents of these wicked men or be swallowed up with them. That's right. You want verse 1? Yeah. This is 2 Samuel 3 and verse 1. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So we can see fruits of the house of David even right here. That's right. It said he increased more in his strength, just like the house of David. That's right. Us young brothers... Us being built up, renewed day by day, because the house of David is being rebuilt. But the house of Saul was against that. They're against the Israelite foreigners. They're against the Gentile mind state of our people. That's why he said, will he go amongst the dispersed, the men, the Gentiles? So you knew our people were dispersed. But what were you doing to bring them back? A man was crippled from his youth. He's walking. And the first thing you say to this known man who's crippled, you say, why are you carrying your bed? It's a Sabbath. Damn, dude. No, no mercy at all, man. Back in Acts 9 and verse 23. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. According to the law. So they found a law that they could use to say he's guilty. Of. Man. So he, they wanted to kill him for preaching Yahweh Shai. Yep. He said, I cringe. Just like, I hear that name. Yep. And it says, then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in the basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. So they, they had a little suspicion to him. Right, because of, of his, his Repu past. His reputation. his reputation. And it says, but Barnabas... Well, which, which it does say, prove a friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to be proven. You got to be, 
you know, show forth that the Lord's dealing with you. Because it also says there's men sent to spy out our liberty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were they were leery. Yeah. They were leery of them. But the Lord made sure to show them, you know. But Barnabas, uh, verse 27, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. So now he's got a witness. Right. See that? Right. And that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly. At Damascus in the name of Yahweh Shai, right? When he was going, you know, going in through his spirit, you know, continuing the faith. But those Jakes, those Jews. Real quick, Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Right. So Paul had uh, the fruit of uh, righteousness and it showed forth by his boldness. Right. Okay. Not just the law. All right. Because right. they'll say your righteousness is... Um, uh, the law. Yeah, they always bring a precept. But faith is also our righteousness. Right, right because you have uh, the uh, the law of faith. I believe that's in the book of Romans, I believe. And then also the sacrifice of your lips. That's right. You know? That's right. And it says, uh, verse 28, and he, and he was with them going in and going out at Jerusalem. So he was with the body. That's right. <laughs> Case in point, like, you know, like that uh, that brother that was a comic board. Yeah. You know, he left... Uh, what's the IUIC? Uh, one, one body, one body. You yeah. know, in Dallas. Yeah. You know, now look, now he's with you know, uh, you the know, believers. The believers. You know. Yeah. But and, now with that understanding, you want to uh, take full advantage of that. Right. With Yahweh Shai dealing with you, then um, you'll have the ability to teach and have precepts and do lessons and edify right. and further the uh, gospel of Yahweh Shai to our people. Uh, and not the uh, aspect of the wicked mindset of a Pharisee and the overzealousness of just the law. Right. And it says, verse 29. Because you got to remember, Phineas, he uh, stabbed a Jake because he was getting he, he was getting ready to pop that Moabite woman. Oh, yeah. So that that account could have been used as a reference point. You know, what I mean, to like show my, you know, like because remember, the Levites stood up and killed 3000 Israelite men in yeah. the wilderness. Yeah. For sacrificing unto the idol. Then remember in the time of Maccabees, one of them rose up and slew the Jake yep. before he was going to uh, sacrifice at the altar. So you have times in our history um, that the law gave us that zeal to uh, enact judgment. Yeah. But now we see the times of uh, enacting judgment with the law. We can't because we're under grace. Right. So this is why if, if something like adultery happens, you just get kicked out. Yeah. But by the law, you're supposed to get put to death. Okay. So there's a lot of things according to the law that um, would, would would change the outcome from the actions that our people are making to, in this today's time. Yeah. Which that proves alone that we're under grace because who's in power? Rome again. This is why back then they couldn't kill Yahweh Shai, but they had to bring him to Rome because the scepter left their hand according to Genesis 49. And it, their sovereignty w was taken yeah, with, yep. um, what's it called? The capital punishment. Thank you, brother. Capital punishment. So that's why they couldn't kill Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. But why'd they kill, why'd they murder Stefan? Because Stefan didn't have a reputation like Yahweh Shai. So that was just like another uh, shooting on Avenue D. Yeah, another Jake. This is another Jake. Yeah. But, but, but according to them, but in the eyes of the Lord, right. he, was a, he was a, you know, very important uh, spirit. Yeah. You know, man of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, back in um, Acts 9... And verse 29, and he spake boldly. Oh, let me just read it. Yep. Bold is the line. See? And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai. Boom. He spoke boldly in the name. This is a man that was killing you for believing in a man and praising his name. Now he's praising this name. Mm -hmm. So this is a fire right. ass chapter. Excuse me. You know, hey, it's a very yeah, beautiful chapter right. with what we're going on, what's going on right now amongst us. And we're reading the conversion of how once Saul persecuted those for calling on his name and now he himself is receiving persecution while calling on that name that's the power of Yahweh that's Shai, right man. very powerful now back in Acts 9 and verse 29 and it says and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai and disputed against the Grecians but they went about to slay him and those Grecians are, 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 are Israelites, but they took on the customs of the Greeks, you know, pertaining to the you know the book of Maccabees when they had it, when they overturned to uh you know Gentiles by the way of uh, what's his name Antiochus the uh, Epiphanes the fourth. Yep. And they loved the glory of the Grecians yeah. best. Yeah. And then that wicked uh priest Jason, he uh put hats on his men, and that's why you see what Alazar today. Yeah. All his men wear hats. Like all oh, you wearing hats now, bro. Like a lot of our people are just yes men. 
A lot of our people are just sheep and not shepherds. Okay. And it's a very dangerous thing when you are following the wrong shepherd as the mindset of a sheep. Yeah. Okay. It's a very dangerous thing. All right. And that's right here. So you had Jake's being uh, niggas like at camp. Yeah. Yep. You know, a nigga, he said, I'm Hebrew hunting. Mm -hmm. You know, at camp. But see, look, yeah, brothers, that. that word Grecian right there goes into what? Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. Boom. So there was some New Yorkers. They was, what up, B? Yep. Right, though? You know, Jake. Just like today. Diesel and shit, drunk, <laughs> you know? And it says, verse uh, 30, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Oh, wait, wait. It said they knew and they went to slay him. What you Yahweh Shai say? If the city don't receive you, shake the dust. That's right. And go to another city. See, he didn't go there, keep going back. Right. Apostle Paul didn't do a clickbait video and say, uh, Grecians come up and get slayed. Right, right. They left. Yeah. They left. They took their peace with them and left. Okay, it ain't for you. We leave. We're moving on. And that's wisdom. Exactly. You know? And it says, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. Mm. And walking in the fear of the Lord. Wow. Like we read earlier, yep. I think the first step to be accepted by the Lord is fear. Yep. And in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we're multiplied. That's where we're at right now, brothers and sisters. See? Mm. See, you got churches throughout the all Judea, Holy Spirit. Galilee, Samaria, and we're being edified while walking in the fear and having comfort through the Holy Spirit. That's what this wow. truth is about as a Hebrew Israelite. Okay. That reminds me of John 14 and 17. Mm. I was at 6, John 14, 18, about going about the comforter. Right. You know? Yep. And 26, which is said the world can't receive it. Mm -hmm. Talking about the world of Israel. And it says, verse uh, tw uh, 32. Excuse me, I'm sorry, 32. Which it says, Paul's ministry. And it's, or, excuse me, Peter's ministry. Excuse me. And it says, and it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints. Which dwell at uh, Lydia, uh, Lydia. Now, what's Lydia? Let's put this in L Y D D A. Okay, a city in Israel. Okay, so Lydia is a city in Israel. And that makes sense why I said the saints in wow, Lydia, because right. the saints are Israelites. Right. See? So who are the saints in Lydia? Whatever. Well, who are the saints in Rome? <laughs> right. Whatever. You know? Come on, you man. Gotta, you got to corner people, man. You got to corner their ass. And it says. And there he found a certain man named uh, um, Aeneas, Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Wow. Man, he was down bad, man. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing our people need, not only spiritual healing, but physical healing. It says, who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Man. See? Oof. And it says, and Peter said unto him. And now he's in Israel. Why didn't the law fix it? Right. And Peter said unto him, uh, Aeneas. Did I say that right? Yeah, uh, Aeneas. Aeneas. Looks like that. Yahweh Shah Mashiach make of thee whole. Ooh, wow. Now mind you, Yahweh Shah, he's not there right now currently, but he wow. is in the spirit. You see? Yep. So, so Yahweh Shah, he, he's with us right here in the spirit. Yep. You know? Yahweh Shah is the one speaking through us right now. Yep. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Now, I just want to see it says his name means laudable. Let me see. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Bear with me. Um, Laudable. Laudable. Yep. Laudable. It says, of an action, idea, or goal deserving praise uh -huh. and condemnation. All right? So deserving praise. Praiseworthy. Right. Admirable. Worthy. So he was worthy. He was worthy in the sight. He was deserving in the sight of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Let's keep going. That's amazing. And it says, verse 34, arise and make thy bed. And he rose immediately. Wow. See that? So healing comes through the act of faith. That's right. Healing doesn't come through the act of the law. Okay? Because you got certain curses that are upon our people that they can't even come back to the law and attempt to be fixed. The whole head is sick, smitten with madness. Yeah, bro. You know, there's certain demons on our people that you're, you're giving them a... Um, a prescription, you know, like they're going, I doctor help. Mm -hmm. Like what he's, what they're prescribing you is not what's going to fix you. He's going to make it worse. Yeah. yeah. Not truly. And it says, and all that dwell at Lydia or uh, Lydda mm -hmm. and Saran saw him and turned to the Lord. Wow. So the miracle. Wow. What, what, what? Fire. Psalms 103. Yes. Uh, that people shall be willing. See, see. So imagine the, the, the uh, response 
that will be in the time of, of the power coming back upon the Lord's men. Uh, Psalms 103 and, um, is it four? Uh, be willing. Psalms 104 and three, is it? Uh, let me, is it verse 10 probably? Um, Let's see here. In the day of thy power. Oh, I got it. Psalms 110 and verse three. There are are you one verse? Okay. Psalms 110 and verse three. It says, uh, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So, oh, I believe, I believe too. Wow. And that's a true thing. We've seen uh, believers uh, uh, gain faith by seeing uh, uh, healing yeah. in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yeah. We've witnessed that personally ourselves. Yep. Okay. Yes. And it says, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. And that's what we're going to have in the kingdom. This is why uh, we'll live forever, but we'll grow, right? Like if, if you have an Israelite baby, they're going to grow as that baby, mm -hmm. but they're going to grow to a certain age as in uh, uh, tw like tw 21. Yeah. You know, you're going to always look like you're 21. But Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but you're still growing. Yeah, you're not going to age, though. You're not going to age. You're going to have to do with the youth. Yeah. See that? So even our women... Yeah. You know, you hey, you sisters out there, you always gonna look prime sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Right. The, well, the, the sandy yeah. glow. Yep. You know that twinkling eye. Right. That that mm -hmm. pureness still. You ain't been fucked over by fucking Jared or Jamal. Yep. You're gonna look beautiful. Yeah. The Israelite man's gonna look beautiful. See? You're gonna be immortal, man. And that's gonna be solidified because of what Yahweh Shai did. That's right. When you read Jeremiah 31 about the new covenant, what solidified that? I'll wait. Yahweh right. Shai. Yahweh Shai solidified the prophecies that were uh, promised to us in the future of our kingdom. That only got uh, fulfilled because of Yahweh Shai fulfilling his end. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Back in Acts 9 and verse 36. Yep. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Adorcas, Adorcas. This woman was full of good works and, and alms deeds, which she did. So you see, here's an example of a believing sister, mm -hmm. right? Keep going. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Wow. Who, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Mm. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So they didn't call nine, uh, nine hundred and eleven. Nope. They they called a man of the Lord. That's right. See that? That's what I would do. I'll pray first. That, oh, most definitely. I'll pray first. You know, keep going. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping. And shewing the coats and garments which Dorcas made. So she was a um, a seamstress. I believe right. that's the word. She sewed. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's what your sister should be doing. You know, like, um, you know, for a sister, because they're going to have a different, they have a different position in us. Yep. You know, their job's different. So if there's, if you have the means, invest in a, a used or a new sewing machine. Mm -hmm. You know, find little things d that you can do. And then, I, I, hey, brother, I made this for you. Right. I'd like to send this to you. Yeah. Could we give this to you? You know, that's a beautiful thing. All right. Yeah. Which yeah. with IUIC and all their wives, y'all should have a sewing club. Right. Should I buy something if it was cool? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. But I ain't putting on no purple <laughs> and gold, my nigga. Like, right. but if it's a cool garment, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Support thy cause. Yeah. But yeah. they're not doing that. But this is a great example to show you the sincerity of the body of believers amongst themselves. See, we're a community. For you brothers out there and, and some of you few uh, since your sisters were a community, we've seen certain brothers over the years, maybe never met, always posting precepts or yeah. certain brother. We just click up in the spirit. That's right. And it's all just for Yahweh Shai's sake. It ain't because we going out drinking and playing pool together. We meeting right here. This yeah. is where we meeting at right here. Yeah. And we're getting built up. That's why it says in Isaiah 34, my spirit have gathered them. Boom. You know, because uh, that's the Lord doing that. Yep. You no know, bone to my bone. Yep. You know, bringing you know bringing the brothers back together. Yep. You know the few sisters. Yeah. This is the church. That's it. You know, and it says a verse. Uh, so if something were to happen, you know, um, this is the scenario play out. Yeah. Because we're not all in the same state. You know, something happens. Hey, call a hey. The spirit could have you. I need to speak to a brother from Great Millstone. I need to go to the camp. I need right. help. You know, and and the, the spirit will be read. You know. 
Chronicles, right? And it says, uh, verse 39, it says, uh, which, Dor which Dorcas made while she was with them. Mm -hmm. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. Woo! And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Wow. Man, that's... Man, he brought her back from the Man, dead, bro. Brought her back from the dead, just like how how a shot brought Lazarus back from the dead, right? You know, and 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 there's also many other you know uh, accounts, but just like how it says, and I believe in John, it says that there's many accounts that will fill the whole earth. You know, mm -hmm. there's that power he gave him though Man. to heal all manner of sickness. You know, got the, the got, animals got, groaning. Got the, yeah, you see him. Yeah, and it says a uh, verse forty one. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Beautiful. Oh, man, that's amazing. That's amazing. And when Which he, is like us that's being right. dead and being brought back. Right. Right, that's right. That's spiritual. See, right this there. is... I, 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 the Wadi Abashmel Shai for putting our spirit to do these uh, weekly sit-downs, uh, which we missed last week because of Babylon. Yeah. But the Wada, we're back at it, you know? But um, these are beautiful accounts because this is literally the time we're in. Literally. We're literally in this time, you know? In the book of Acts, all over again. Yep. So you, for you, even you said, which brothers, uh, brothers are being built up, you know, minutely, hourly, daily, weekly, you know, for you sisters out there, these these are accounts for you to um, hearken upon and say, see, even me as a believing sister, I'll I'll be taken care of. That's right. See, and we letting you know that, and we ain't saying you gonna be taken care of because you pay tithes, <laughs> right? Right. And it says, uh, verse uh, 41, and and when he had called the saints, excuse me, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. Amazing. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was a good read, man. That was a great read. So, man. yeah, that's, uh, that's X. Um, the ninth chapter. So uh, Adonata Za will be going into Acts 10 this Sunday. Uh, Adonata Za, Babylon has been Babylonian <laughs> lately. Right. But uh, hey, the show must go on. So it's all good. So we do pray, hope that uh, you uh, brothers and you few sincere sisters are uh, edified through the spirit as we were. You know, reading these uh, accounts and letters as we see it happening in real time. And this is a, a more greater reason for us to continue to trust and have faith in Yahweh Bashmael Shai through the doctrine of Great Millstone. That's right. And I'm going to say that humbly but boldly because outside of that, um, we're not seeing that same fruit. And all right. And there you uh, don't look at it carnally, look at it spiritually. That's right. All right. So uh, with that, we're just going to say call law. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Chakwadash. Double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone that do well. Peace and salutations to the Lord's elect. And with that being said, Shalom. Shalom.